So admittedly, I don't know how to really start this video, but I think it's important to just talk. So there's that. <laughs> um, so institutional definitions on trafficking really vary um, based on what organization you're going to, but the main one comes from the UN uh, when they made their 2000 treaty, um, International Agreement on Against Transnational Organized Crime scare quotes uh, but basically they targeted um, smuggling right so undocumented immigrants uh, sex workers um, this is part of the war on drugs uh, this is that treaty so they defined human trafficking in this and that is the main definition that is used so you have to fit like three different criteria in order to be considered a human trafficking victim uh, sex trafficking is also in there but um, yeah, it's a really hard definition to fit. So at one point I uh, faced some abuse in the industry, like um, it was really severe and I don't wanna talk about it, but like, yeah, I called Polaris, the um, national trafficking hotline. And uh, yeah, they, they told me that I am not a trafficking victim. They, they, they like just basically told me that and they said that they can help me and that I should you know heaven forbid you know if I be I be trafficked you know then I can call back so like I should call back like when I'm actually trafficked so I felt very supported in that moment as you can imagine um really great like I have to wait until the worst possible thing that could happen to you happens and then they might help you so that was great. Um, a lot of organizations run this way um, and it's uh, really not great. <laughs> um, yeah, this is why I kind of have a pretty traumatized uh, idea of this label um, and why I think it's pretty harmful a lot of the times because what trafficking is because of all these institutions is now really, really worst case scenario that like doesn't happen to most people right so this is where you get the idea that like you probably heard this but like especially like from feminists they'll say like oh but like women in the sex tra trade are raped like 25 to 50 times a day forever and then they die um something like that but like that to them is their conception of what the average is even though it's not really possible for like anyone it's those kind of cases are very freak out of the ordinary cases that rarely ever happen because you would essentially have to be gang raped uh, multiple times a day in order for that to happen um and it's just not normal because it's not how we take clients so even if like uh, let's say we're working under somebody and they're taking all our money and um you're seeing a lot of clients typically it's just not that much and I honestly don't think you would survive very long like I don't think you would survive a year under those conditions um, but that, that unfortunately like stories like that have been the norm <laughs> and so what this creates is a situation where you your abuse in the sex industry is not really taken seriously unless you fit like very extreme narratives um, and so it, it's really not great um, this also puts the pressure on trafficking victims to fit very extreme narratives that um, don't really like really like tell the full story. So you probably noticed as well that like trafficking stories tend to exclude the fact that like a person is undocumented. They kind of leave that out because they these people who run these organizations do not want trafficking victims to be associated with crime and so they kind of leave out like oh this person's undocumented they wanted to be smuggled here and the smuggler ended up being abusive and so they won't explain it to you that way usually so all of this creates problems and i know like at this point I kind of wanted this to be shorter but i think you know what where i'm getting at with this um so obviously a lot of people that are uh, trafficking survivors that you probably see all, you know, like all over social media and in news reports, um, they themselves do not fit the definition that the UN uses. Um, or like that some of these institutions use. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I guess that's, yeah. 
Um, I also think that it really shouldn't be on institutions to define these things because um, they really weren't made for us in the first place. Um, like these definitions were not made to help us. Uh, the people who made these definitions, you know, they say that like, oh, trafficking is modern day slavery. The, the people who made these definitions were not like, you know, slavery scholars or like historians or, you know, people like doing the work of abolition. Like that's not who made these definitions or who like actually created the criteria around like, this is what sex trafficking is. This is what human trafficking is. Um, so it would be wrong to use that definition when it comes to people's actual stories, I think. Um, I think it's better to create a distinction between like, this is the legal system. This is the international system. This is how they define human trafficking. This is how people on the ground people in real life um, talk about their experiences. Um, this person was abused and this is how it happened to them. Um, this is how they um, identify as. Uh, I think that's probably a better way to uh, look at this stuff. It, it allows people to talk openly about their experiences. Um, another thing that I just wanted to address, uh, uh, just policing around label labels in general. Uh, I kind of, hmm. so there's the like sex worker label um, and there's this tendency of like, if you experience any abuse, if you have a negative experience, if you uh, don't fully consent sometimes, um, then you're not really a sex worker, you're a trafficking victim. So this creates another issue for many reasons. First of all, institutions do not define trafficking that way. They're not like, well, if you're not absolutely happy in this industry all the time and you're not, you know, um, if you're not free of abuse, you've never been abused, then uh, you're automatically a trafficking victim. So institutions and the law don't define trafficking that way. So to say like, oh, well, if you had a bad experience, you weren't really a sex worker, um, you were a trafficking victim. Not really. I feel like we have to accept um, people like that because they're not gonna get a lot of acceptance anywhere else. Um, and they are, you know, they understand how the industry works more than like the mainstream public or any of these institutions anyway. So really like we're their main community, we're the main uh, people who would understand them. Um, yeah, it's also like if they want to identify as a sex worker, you know, and they want to talk about their experiences um, because they're policed in a way, like we're policed in a way that like no other worker ever gets policed. Um, you can say that you've been abused in a certain industry and that you hated it and that you wouldn't have chosen it and that it really was something you were forced to do. And it, it really doesn't become this huge issue. Um, but unfortunately, because of sex work, it does. And I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to add, but um, I guess stuff to think about.